Here on BBC One now, songs of praise from Red Ruth. They've been taking tin from the ground here in Cornwall for 3,000 years, but up to 1870, a hundred years of copper mining had produced more wealth than 10 centuries of tin. Red Ruth is a town made of granite, and a very great deal of that granite has been used to build chapels street after street. A reminder that if you scratch a Cornishman, you find a nonconformist. John Wesley's following here was a strong and lasting one, but now in a very different world. Only one of his chapels is still consecrated, Red Roof Methodist Church. A home not only for the Methodists of the town, descendants of those early congregations, but tonight for all the people of all Red Roof's churches. And the first thing they've chosen is, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It's Gwyneth Pitt. The acoustics are perfect, and some of Charles Wesley's hymns were sung here for the first time by the great crowds of Red Ruth tinners who came to hear his brother preach.
13, Celia Brown is now the senior member of Red Roof Methodist Church Junior Choir. Celia, I know that you sing with the choir. Is the rest of your family involved in church work? Well, uh, my brother and sister both used to sing in the choir, and Mum used to sing with the choir sometimes, and with Dad playing, and I was only small, I was four, and I used to go along with them. And I was shy, and so I went under the seat, but I still used to sing, you know. Now, you're sitting at the organ in your own home. I can see various instruments. There's a flute there, a guitar behind me, a piano over there. Do you play any of these instruments? Yeah, well, I play the piano, and my brother and sister both play the guitar and the piano. And Dad plays the organ, because he plays it at church, and he's playing it for songs of praise as well. Now, your choir are going to sing something for us. What's it going to be? It's called This Little Light of Mine. And why have you chosen that? Well, it's fast, and we all like fast things, because we... You know, they're better than the slow ones. <laughs> Howard Mankey is mine captain at South Crofty Mine, one of the few working tin mines left in Cornwall. When I became a miner, I was, when I left school at 14, I was put to work with a chap called Jimmy Curtis, very hard man to work with, and uh, I started backstoping with Jimmy um, right away. There were no training systems, no, no training uh, schools or anything of that nature at that time. You just went on with a miner. The mine captain's duties is really to ensure that first the miners are working in a very safe method. You check with the miners to see that all the um, this area is okay, there's no problems. As you get onto the station from the, the cage, you're then walking into the heart of the mine. And my son was, um, went to Texan College and um, he passed all his A-levels and O-levels and he's done extremely well. He accepted to go to Reading University, which he was supposed to go on the September, but three months prior to that, he started to not look at cell, you know, wasn't eating very much. I said, you aren't eating anything. Oh, yes, I had dinner out to the tech. And then we noticed that he was going smaller and smaller and his clothes seemed to be falling off him. And he died on the um, August 24. Well, losing my son was a great blow, as normally to any parent. And my wife, she um, took it very, very hard, and um, she couldn't overcome the problem, unfortunately. Uh, Thirteen months from the time my son died, my wife passed away as well. The hymn I chose is Guide Me Over the Great Jehovah, because I believe that the words in it is guide, which means you need help, and when in our home life, in our working life, 
we need a lot of help. And especially when we have troubles and sorrows, then we have the need help to overcome them. And in this hymn, you've got everything that one requires. How weak we are in the time of trouble, and how strong we can be made once again. Methodist Mrs. Gwen Jenkin remembers the days when revival missions used to pack village chapels all over Cornwall. My little village chapel, they thought that the time was ripe to have a mission. We went faithfully night after night. And, uh, I think the leaders were getting a bit worried that the mission wouldn't be successful. And we sit in there feeling miserable while the prayer meeting was going on. Various people prayed. and. Um, we nothing happened at all so then i heard a voice that i knew very well and it was my mother trembling i'm sure and i looked up and tears were rolling down her face and she was praying most earnestly that her children and the other young people would make a definite stand for and promise to serve the lord and come to the rail to show everyone that they intended to do that so um, that, of course, broke my heart. I couldn't sit there any longer. And the minute I got up to go to the rail, my girlfriend's just waiting for someone to make a move. So there were several of us teenage girls that went out at the same time. And there was great rejoicing, of course, and uh, the revival had really started. So I stood on my feet, and immediately I stood on my feet. The word of my chosen hymn flashed into my mind. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like me his praise should sing.
Peter Sincock is a careers officer. Finding a job for the young is one of Red Ruth's most serious problems. Um, what exactly you are going to do? Whether or not you do plan to go on to technical college to this post O level secretarial course, uh, and what's going to happen if you don't get the necessary entry qualifications? Well, I think that if I didn't get the qualifications, I'd just have to look for another job, you know. Well, the general position regarding opportunities for school leavers in the area uh, is that there at present there are very few opportunities in any range of, of work you care to mention. But still, many of them, you know, the reality of the unemployment position hasn't really registered. So what we tend to find an awful lot uh, during the summer holidays is that a lot of young people, when the sun comes out, tend not to have too much concern about finding a job. Um, and it's not until uh, the end of the summer comes, and it's when they contact the careers office then, that, uh, you know, the, the, the really grim situation kind of hits them right between the eyes. We've recently uh, tried to make uh, a concerted effort to try and help them by um, forming a, a committee to organize a whole range of schemes, the Youth, Youth and Community Project. And we hope to absorb in, under this scheme uh, approximately 24 young people who would be um, carrying out a whole range of, of, of tasks um, to benefit the community. I've chosen a hymn which it's a hymn of certainty, and one which invites all people everywhere, no matter who or what they are, to participate and to join in. The hymn I've chosen is, Whosoever Will May Come. Gary Murphy already feels that he has a vocation to the Roman Catholic priesthood. It's a very young age, isn't it, to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life? Are you convinced that this is really what you want? Yes, I am very convinced, I think, because um, I've had this vocation for quite a while now. And instead of just wearing off, it seems to go stronger and stronger. In spite of the fact that you will be out and about, you will nevertheless be giving up a great deal, won't you? Family life, for instance. Yes, I will be giving up family life, I think. But for example, I would be gaining a lot of things like other people's friendships and knowing that I'll have personal salvation. Now, that phrase, personal salvation, Gary, what does that exactly mean to you? Um, the phrase simply means going to heaven, I think. And I think that I'd like to devote my whole life in preparing for this, because it's such a great thing, I think. Now, have you chosen him for us? 
Well, I picked Love Divine or Love's Excelling. I think on one verse steps out from the phrase, that's Jesus without all compassion. I think that Christ was very compassionate. Miss Florence Paul has just retired after nearly 50 years with St John's Ambulance. She still does welfare work at places like Barn Coos Hospital. Tell me something about the history of the place, Miss well, Paul. Well, it was originally a workhouse. Uh, it's been naturally improved and altered and modernised. Now it's, um, well, on the best geriatrics in the west of England. What about this archway here? The archway here, that was an original entrance archway that everything used to come through to go up to the main, uh, well, main workhouse. Well, I remember when I was about three years of age, a house went down in there. Actually, there's the gate post, the actual gate post of the house that went down, or the entrance to the house. And as I said, I was about three, and there was a terrible, terrible rumbling. I shall never forget it. And uh, actually, I've got pictures here of the house before, after it went down. Was anybody hurt? Nobody hurt. There was a lady in that room just before it went, and she happened to go out into her kitchen, was in the back of the house, and immediately the front went down, because she was all right. And of course, this is a shaft which is in the road, and we were living right next to here, and we were evacuated. So this was actually a railway years ago? These granite steps or the sleepers, stumps, aren't they really? stumps, they're the only remains that are left, and you can see the holes in them where the uh, bolts went in. I remember very well, actually, we've seen the engine run along there to Fuser's Road, exactly opposite where I lived. And it was lovely to run out and see the engine going across. And we used to go in there and order our coal, and it was delivered by a man with a horse and van. Well, Miss Paul, we've seen some of the history of Red Ruth, and we've also seen how it's changed in the past. But do you think some of the people have changed? Well, yes, of course they have. I mean, definitely since I was young. 
uh, for the good in some cases, and of course, some youngsters for the bad, I'm afraid. But there's some good youngsters around, I can assure you. And in church, we've got some good youngsters. We haven't got a lot in our church. We're a rather small church, but we've got a lovely young group coming on. So you think young people are getting from your church what you got when you were young? Yes. In fact, when I hear one little boy up there reading a lesson, I wonder sometimes whether he won't be Archbishop of Canterbury or something. They're doing a lovely job, because when you go to church as a youngster, you do get it sort of put into you what is best in life and what to aspire to. Now, Miss Paul, what hymn have you chosen? God Who For His New Creation. And it's a lovely hymn. And, of course, I particularly want that too in Westminster Abbey to go with it. But the words of the hymn are beautiful. It brings in all about the Cornish saints and the people of Cornwall who are helping to carry on life as it should be. us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Go forth in the strength of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to live and work and spend yourselves in the righteous service of our Lord. Thanks be to God.